Hey, you guys, and welcome back to one of my favorite videos to do every single quarter, which is my Kanban board reset. I'm going to go over my goals and how I did in Q1 and what I'm going to change for Q2 because I've got kind of a new system that I'm working on and I cannot wait to share it with you. I know that after the craziness of 2020, we were all hoping for a good start to 2021. And I have to say that it was a really good start for me. And I really hope that it was a good start for you too. So let me know in the comments how 2021 has started off for you so far. But what I'm going to do in this video, we're going to start off with what were my biggest biggest wins, what were my struggles or my biggest challenges this quarter, and what am I doing and changing for next quarter. So I have this in my goals planner, but I also just made myself some little notes of these are my biggest wins and all the major projects that I got finished in 2021 Q1. So this is in the three month period between end of December to the end of March. I ran three virtual writing retreats. I finished and published a book, yay, Fate Surrender, which actually hit the top 40 books in all of iBooks and um, several top 100 lists over on Google, as well as number one in five or six different categories on Amazon. So it was a very good release. Whew, so glad to get that book out. It was a huge, huge accomplishment, and I feel really good. That came out on January 15th. I hit 41,000 subs here on YouTube. I ran Publish and Thrive, which is a five-week course with my largest ever enrollment. And it was such a great experience. I feel like it was a really good round. It continues to get better and better every single time because I learn more about what my students need. So that was really, really fun. I also successfully ran another round of my HB90 class. And completed and designed the planner. This is something I do every quarter, but it still takes a lot of time. So I'm going to add it to my accomplishments. I ran a five day word sprint challenge, which was also really fun. I did live videos here on YouTube, as well as a bunch of emails that went out in my writing sprints group and things like that. I lost eight pounds. <laughs> I had hoped to lose more like 20, but I will take eight as a win. I filmed, edited and published 16 new videos here on my heart breathings channel. And I wrote 30,000 words on a new book, which is Vengeful Darkness. I will be continuing that obviously this quarter and publishing it this quarter. And I did nearly 60 hours of live video, <laughs> which is a lot. So I go live three times a week over on my Sarah Cannon YouTube channel, which is a channel more for my fans. I'm reading books. We do a coffee chat Q&A on Fridays. You guys are welcome to join us. I will link that channel down below. So that's three hours a week. I also did a two hour live Q&A every week for Publish and Thrive. I did a live kickoff call for HB90. I did one live HB notebook challenge. Did not really, I think, work out the way I'd hoped, but I did show up for that. And I also did a bunch of lives for the retreats and double down day and other things like that. So yeah, 60 hours of live video. That's kind of crazy. One of my biggest wins this quarter too was that I had my best income ever in a single quarter. It still feels a little bit overwhelming and exciting and hard to believe, but Yes, thank you so much to everybody who is supporting this channel, my planners, my books, my courses, and just showing up here as a subscriber. It means so much to me, and you guys are truly making my dreams come true. It was a huge quarter. In terms of my Kanban board, let me show you how that turned out. So I'm actually recording this on April 5th, and this is the beginning of week two of the quarter, but you can see I have not yet reset my board because I wanted to do it for this video. So look at how awesome this turned out, like just the sheer number of post-its upon post-its. I really accomplished a lot. It was probably my most productive quarter ever. Now, if you followed along, you know that I did make some changes. I had intended to write The Witch's Door and read that on YouTube. I also had intended to record a audiobook of The Witch's Key. So all of that got moved off the board. And instead, I focused on Vengeful Darkness. And I did get quite a ways into it. So I got most of the plotting finished and quite a ways into the book. But I didn't quite finish my entire 
higher word count. And this whole stack is all one project that just didn't get done, which is basically to reformat all of my books and re-upload them with new back matter. And it just kept becoming not the biggest priority at the moment. So you can see that those are basically reformatting my box set, reformatting Shadow Demons Book 9, and so on and so on. So that's something that will get done in this quarter. But otherwise, a very successful quarter. When it comes to goal number two, which is my heart breathing goal, look at this, you guys. I literally only had one piece left. And this is not something that I can control. So this was just a milestone I hoped to hit to get to 42,000 subscribers on YouTube. And I made it to about, by the end of the quarter, I was at about 41,600 or so. And now I'm already at 41 thousand eight hundred and something. So I got very close to this, but I didn't get a chance to actually mark it off. But again, that's not really a task. It's just kind of a milestone. In terms of all of my tasks, it was the first time I think I have ever in the history of my <laughs> uh, planning this way, completely cleared off every single task that was in my control for the quarter. Now, when it comes to goal number three here, I also did the same thing. The only things that didn't get done were kind of out of my control here. So one of them was the weight loss. So I had lost at one point 10 pounds and then I gained two back. So I lost the 10 pounds, but I did not lose all the way to 25, which is what I was hoping. But weight loss has been a struggle, which I'll talk about in a, a little bit. Also, I had hoped to complete the 21 day fix, which is 21 straight days of exercising. And on day 18, I injured myself. So I couldn't do those last three days of the workout. Out. But otherwise, I was really proud of myself for making it 18 straight days. The rest of this stack here is something I knew would not get done within this quarter. It was just something that I wanted to put all of the post-its on the board, which is the Manifestation Babe Academy course that I'm taking. And I'm on module five now, but it this course lasts until June or July anyway. So I knew I wouldn't finish it and I probably won't even finish it in Q2. So it's just kind of Imagine that one is off of there and then take a look at the board overall. This is all one project that didn't get done, but everything else did. This got completed and this got mostly completed except for an injury. So in terms of my productivity in Q1, I think it was truly the best of my life and it paid off. Like I said, it really paid off in my numbers of subscribers going up, my income going up, my confidence and positive momentum, which you'll hear me talk about a little bit more. So let's look at the actual goals. Okay, so this is my goals planner and I just have this goals page kind of ready to show you guys. So my first goal was basically just to grow my community and work on my writing routine. And I was going to measure that by the days I was writing, which I did not really do a great job of writing as many days as I had hoped, <laughs> which is of course why I fell behind on that goal of writing as many words as I had wanted. Also, I wanted to get my newsletter to 13K, which I did Coven, which is my Facebook group to 3,500, which I did. And then my Instagram, I wanted to get to 6,700, but I actually fell 80 people short of that. So I didn't quite hit that goal, but I was close. And then I wanted to get my Sarah Cannon YouTube channel to 6,000. And instead I was, I missed it by 190 people. So a little bit short on those two goals, which is fine. I came close, but not quite finished it. So this was probably my weakest goal, which is of course my writing goal, which is very important to me. So I'm going to be making some changes around this in the next quarter. Goal number two was my heart breathing goal to continue to create quality, helpful content on heart breathings to grow my income by a certain amount. I specifically laid out my course income, which I know I've got it kind of hidden because I just, it's personal information, but it's also stuff that I don't want other people comparing. So you can see though that I have this highlighted here because I hit, I always set for income like a good, better, best goal, where the good goal is kind of the one on the bottom that I'm heading for. And when it comes to the two income goals for Etsy and course income, I hit that top end goal, which really kind of blew my mind, but was very, very exciting. Then I wanted to increase my followers on this social media. And you can see here that my lowest goal on YouTube was 42,000. And like I said, I was about 400 people short by the end of the quarter. And now I've I'm about 200 short now still from hitting that. So I definitely overestimated how 
much my channel would grow at the beginning of the year. But in terms of Instagram, my newsletter and the word sprint challenge, Facebook group, I got down to these lower numbers. So 8,000, 12,000 and 2,500, a little bit over those numbers, but I did not hit, get enough to get these second level goals. So like I said, a huge payoff when it comes to the income, because I focused mostly on the courses, but I didn't focus as much on the like subscribe accounts and stuff like that. So a, a huge win, but not quite the numbers I was looking for, but that's okay. Really, and I've talked about this so many times before, but I will say it again. But when I set these goals and I put these numbers here, the numbers are really not the point. <laughs> it's still a win, even if I don't surpass these numbers. The question is, did I set good goals that helped me? Did I figure out projects and did I put my attention in places and my focus in places that actually got me closer to my goals? So even if I didn't quite hit 42,000, did my YouTube channel grow with what I was doing? Yes, it grew huge. It grew over 2000 new subscribers. So yeah, I didn't quite hit the numbers I was hoping for, but I did grow and I did move in the right direction. And that for me is always a win. I never feel disappointed by that kind of number. Like being 190 off doesn't matter as long as I grew and I know that things I was working on made an impact. My third goal is to nurture myself and my business by improving my health, my systems and my routines. I will be mindful of my energy by tracking a daily nurture score. So I track this score. I've shown this before, so I can link that down below. You can also check it out on my Instagram. I have a uh, highlight at the top called energy score if you want to see how I track that. But basically, I just track it in a spreadsheet and I wanted to hit a five, a six or a seven and I actually actually got over a seven. It was about a seven and a half. So I did really well on this energy score. And basically I'm tracking how well I track my time, my writing, my quality family time, my eating, my task integrity, which is basically, did I do what I said I was going to do? My fun and play time. So I did a lot more gaming this quarter, which I was really enjoying because I think that made an impact and helped me to get more done without burning out. And also, did I keep up with my morning and evening routines? Did I get seven hours of sleep? And did I drink 60 ounces of water? That's kind of how I determine this, this nurture score. So overall, I did a really good job on most of those goals. Okay, so before we go into my Q2 goals and resetting the board and all that other fun stuff, let's talk a little bit about where I struggled this quarter. Because it's easy, I think, to look at this list of all the things I accomplished and all these sticky notes. And it's, I think, from the outside looking in, it can be easy to think, well, of course she did it. She's got it easy. She's just super productive or uh, make it look easy in a way because you just see all the work that's completed. But there are always struggles. And everybody that you see on the internet, whether they've got a million subscribers or they have the perfectly clean house or whatever else you may see on Instagram or YouTube, all of us struggle. We all are working our butts off and we all have the same struggles that you do. So I think it's important to point those out instead of just saying, look at all the things I did to also come out and say, here's what was really hard this quarter and where I really fell short of who I want to be. So one, as my business grows and my income grows and we're moving into this new house and so we're building a new house and there's been some major progress on that. I'm also finding that my anxiety is growing proportionately. Now, <laughs> there are reasons behind this that go much deeper. And, you know, sometimes my business mentor, Amber McHugh, will say that being an entrepreneur is sometimes more about working on yourself and your inner landscape than it is about actually working on your business. And I think that this is so very true that the more you run your own business and try to be your best self or try to put yourself out there, the more those things about yourself, like your mental health, your fears, your worries about yourself, your shortcomings, your trauma, all of that stuff starts to come to the surface. And for me, this is showing up as major anxiety and to the point of severe panic attacks. Well, maybe I shouldn't use the word severe, but to me, they feel really serious, Of uh, especially in the evenings once the 
to-do list is done, the work is done, the kids are in bed, and I start to have calm, quiet time, I was starting to have pretty nasty panic attacks. And then what was happening and is unfortunately still happening for me is when I finally rest and go to sleep, I'm having sort of night terrors. I'm waking up in the middle of the night covered in sweat. My husband's having to wake me up maybe two or three times a night to shake me because I'm making noises or screaming in my sleep, which I know sounds super dramatic, (laughs) but I want to show the real side of this. So I think that after doing my quarterly review and really thinking through why this is happening, there are a few reasons. So this is where I'm going to get super real with you guys and uh, just ask you to be gentle in the comments. One is that I grew up with a narcissistic mother who I was just never good enough. Nothing I could ever do, no accomplishment I ever hit was ever good enough. And I kind of got used to this pattern in my life of if I did something really good or hit a level that was maybe higher than expected, I was going to be punished for it. And it was usually in a private kind of way of saying, well, you're not pretty enough to be on that stage. Or why do you think you can do that? You never would have won if it hadn't been for this. And it was never like the type of abuse that was, you know, blown out of proportion or really dramatic. It was just daily constant micro abuse. And that really chipped away at my self confidence in a big way. And I didn't even understand how much until I got later in life. So that's one piece of the puzzle. Another piece of the puzzle that I've talked about on this channel before, and I won't go deep into detail, you'll have to go searching for it, is just that when I was kind of shortly after college, I was in some of the most happiest time of my life. I was really exploring my independence and really having the time of my life traveling through Europe. I had a terrible experience and I was assaulted. And I... After that experience, I think that between the way I was treated as a child and all the stress that I grew up under, as well as that experience kind of solidifying things in my adult life, I started to get this pattern or this feeling that if I shine and I bring enough attention to myself or I do really well, excel in some way, that life is going to punch me in the face. (laughs) And I don't know really how how else to put that, except to say that that is kind of one of the limiting beliefs or one of the things that I have to work through because it's something that happens subconsciously. It's not something that I can directly control, but I have noticed this pattern in my life that when I start to succeed or things start going really well, I start to panic that because things are going well, something terrible is going to happen. Like my child is going to get hurt or I'm going to be in a car accident and die or, you know, everything's going to be taken away from me or my YouTube channel get canceled. Like all these things go through my head. And the, even if they're completely irrational, it's just this feeling that waiting for the other shoe to drop, waiting for something horrible to happen to balance out all the good stuff. And so what I have done in the past is I have self-sabotaged. I've said, okay, things are way too good. So I'm just going to not show up anymore and I'm going to fall into this deep depression. And then once everything starts to calm down and my income goes down and I start to lose momentum and fans and everything else, then I can emerge from my cave and start working again. And I'm just determined not to fall back into those patterns. So I don't want to burn out. I don't want to push myself too far. And I have to be mindful of the fact that as I grow as a channel, as a person, as my courses get better, as my income goes up, as we get ready to move into my dream house, all of these things that, well, basically as all of these things that were on my dream board, my vision board, having a baby, having the perfect house, you know, all of these things start to come true, it should be bringing me nothing but extreme joy. And instead I'm facing these anxieties and this massive panic that because of the good stuff, something terrible is coming. And I want to get out of that. It is not how I want to feel. So please don't judge me in the comments. It's just, we're all on our own journey here. And even if it's not logical, and it's not a way of saying, you know, I'm not happy with what I have. It's just saying we all have our stuff that we have to work through. And this is one for me. And so even if my life can look really good on the outside and it's going well, there's still this inner landscape of panic and anxiety that I have to work through. So we'll talk about how I'm going to change some things in Q2 to make up for it. 
In addition, uh, another struggle for me lately has been my comparisonitis. So this is where I, I used to struggle with this pretty badly that I would want to be, let's just use YouTube because it's easy and we're here on YouTube. If I wanted to be a YouTuber, I would look at people who are more successful than me and compare myself to them. And it would cause me to work really hard to be as successful as they are. But if I didn't get the exact results or I didn't become as popular as they were, then I would start to feel bad about myself and negative self, like saying negative things to myself and just feeling down in the dumps or like my book release could do well, but if it didn't do as well as this other person, then I was, you know, worthless or whatever. I have healed a lot of that crap. Like a lot of that is gone from my life. Thank goodness. But the more my anxiety starts to ratchet up, the more I've noticed that I feel that comparison again, that I'll be scrolling through Instagram and see someone who's like, I just got a movie deal. And I'm like, um, my life sucks. And it's so out of proportion because my life is amazing and I want to be grateful for it. But that is like a, a automatic trigger kind of way that I feel sometimes when I am in high anxiety is I start to compare myself to other people. And it, I find that if you, uh, if you go looking for that comparison, you're always going to find people who are doing better or seem prettier or seem to be doing more or, you know, whatever. And it's just a bad road to go down and I don't want to do it anymore. So these are the kinds of things that come up that I've started to realize in my quarterly review, which is why it's so important to do them. Another thing that I'm struggling with is weight loss. So this is also where comparison comes in because my child is going to be two years old in September. So she's over a year and a half now. And when I scroll Instagram through all the mommy vloggers and stuff like that, that I see, and they're just like bounced back to their pre-baby weight, literally a month postpartum, I start to feel really depressed about myself and down on my own body. And this is another place that my mother was super, super critical of me when I was younger, like my hair, my nails, my face, my like, I was just criticized literally my entire life. I think I grew to really be critical, self critical. And so weight is a big thing for me. And I have been trying very hard to get back to healthier eating. But it goes hand in hand with that busyness and anxiety that when I feel really anxious, I don't really want to eat a salad. I want to go and eat some chocolate or some pizza or whatever. Like sweets are a really bad addiction for me. So the weight loss and eating right has also been a struggle. And you can see from what I was talking about on the board, I did do some exercise, some really good exercise. I've gotten better about drinking water. I did lose a little bit of weight, but it's not coming off as fast as I want. And because like I said, I'm doing 60 plus hours hours of video every quarter, I constantly see my own face. And so that is bringing up a lot of negative feelings as well. Then the other thing I've been struggling with a lot is decision making. So this goes with the stress, all of this stems from the stress and anxiety. When it comes to the to do list, I can get those things done. But when it comes to the big ideas, like trying to decide the overarching marketing plan, or what order I'm going to put my books out, or what I'm going to read next on YouTube, those decisions that feel more long term have been very difficult for me to make. And that translates also into my writing. As you know, if you're a writer, decisions are a constant part of our lives. Not only how we're going to market our books, but what the covers are going to look like, what comes next, what our characters are going to do next, what we name the character, what happens in the plot. It's all decision making. And so it is very bad that I'm having trouble making those types of big decisions for myself. So now that we've been through the struggles, let's talk about what my goals are for Q2 and how I'm hoping to counteract a lot of those struggles. This is my Q2 set of goals. They're always pretty much the same goals for me. I like to keep the same goals, just change the numbers, change the projects, maybe change the way that it's worded. To write, publish, and promote books in order to increase my income and following, I will make, and then I have a monthly income goal here, and then I also want to raise my following too. And this is my newsletter to 13,005, Instagram to 7,000, my coven to 3750, and my YouTube to that 6,000 that I didn't quite hit last quarter. And the reason I want to do this is I want to keep growing my momentum, but I'm not setting crazy goals. So I'm not too far off from these numbers and I want to keep them pretty much easy 
going, but where you're going to see this now, I know I put write, publish and promote. So this goal includes all of my marketing, all of my writing, all of my publishing. If you don't have like a YouTube channel and a health goal and all of this other stuff, you could make those three separate goals. So you could make your writing goal, one goal, your publishing goal, or your income, something different. And then your promotions or whatever, a third goal, you don't have to lump them all into one. I just have been using this system a lot. And for me, it makes the most sense to separate my two businesses between my writing, my heart breathings channel, and then having always kind of a mental health related goal. So that's the way I like to do it. But if you want to do this type of planning for yourself, just keep in mind that you could make these separate goals. You can arrange them however you want to. And I explain this, of course, in the actual planner, but... I also have a course. So if you're interested, it'll run again in June that takes you through how to set these goals. And I will personally help you set your goals if you've had struggles with that. That is my first goal. On the outside, this goal looks the same, but I really want to change the way that I've arranged my schedule and my time blocks and my priorities to make me more likely to be writing more words and getting these projects done. So I'll talk about that in a little bit. Goal two is the same as it was last quarter, continue to create quality heartfelt content on heart breathings to grow my income and impact. Then I have a new course income goal, which isn't as much as it was last quarter because I'm not running Publish and Thrive again until Q3. And then I have an Etsy income goal that's about the same as it always is. I want to increase my following. (laughs) I went a little bit less ambitious on this quarter. So I would like to get to at least 43,000, maybe on the high end, 45,000 subscribers on YouTube. My Instagram to 8,500 or up newsletter to 12,500 and up. And actually this might be something I'm already close to right now. Like I might be at like 12,400. So this should be a really easy goal. And then my word sprint challenge group to 3000. So if you're not in the word sprint challenge group on Facebook, come join us if you are on Facebook, because we do a lot of live video and I'm going to be doing a lot more live video, like live sprints in uh, Camp Nano. Goal three, to support my mental health and nurture my health and productivity by produce, by improving my routines, eliminating negative and toxic influences and focusing on energy management. So the wording of this third goal is a little bit different this quarter. My goal is to achieve a daily score of six, seven, or eight on average. So I have 10 things that I'm tracking. And these 10 things, if I do it for the day, then I get one point. And so I'm trying to get at least six of these done on a daily basis. It's basically the same morning and evening routine, seven hours of sleep, 60 ounces of water, track my time. And this is going to be a big one. I'm going to have a whole separate video on this playtime, art journaling, or going for a walk for myself, going to the beach or playing game like video games at night, just something that's not work quality family time, writing or story work. So I added my writing as a thing that I want to do to nurture myself because the writing is helpful to my creativity. Reading time, which also helps nurture me and then limited social media. So this is a big one and I want to talk about it real quick. So as my anxiety continues to go up and that comparison continues to go, I have to do something to break those patterns or else I'm just going to stay where I've always been. And like I said, in the past, I allowed myself to dig in deeper to those bad behaviors so that I could sabotage. And I'm just not going to live that life anymore. I'm going to try my best to nurture myself and to do what I need to do to stay healthy in my mental health. Because the better my mental health is, the better my business will be, the better my family life will be, and everything will improve. So this is really the priority for me this quarter. And one of the things that I've decided to do is to limit my social media. Now, social media is a huge part of my business. I have to be on social media for both of my businesses. Obviously, YouTube, I have live videos, I have events going on, I want to make sure to stay in touch. I have my Instagram stories. It's a big part. My YouTube, my Facebook groups, all of this stuff is a big part of my business. But having it on my phone, I started to notice that what I was doing is like being at dinner and a YouTube comment would come up and it might be something negative or, you know, critical 
critical. And then it would send me into a negative spiral where I would go into Instagram and look for other things and start responding to people or answering DMs while I'm like laying in bed when I should be reading or getting ready for bed, answering people's DMs and questions about how to self-publish or how do I do this? And always feeling like I'm plugged in at all times is just not good for my anxiety or my mental health. So I have taken Facebook completely off my phone and I will only use Facebook or interact on Facebook when I have designated times throughout the day. And that has been difficult. I've had it off my phone now for over a week. It's a challenge because I've been used to being on Facebook a lot. And so I'm taking that off my phone. Another thing is that I am limiting my Instagram time. So I used to have the Instagram app just like front and center on my home screen. Now I have removed it from my home screen. It's still on my phone because I can't do my Instagram stories without it being on my phone. Um, so I... I'm leaving it on my phone, but I am just checking it a few times throughout the day rather than having it open all the time. And this is going to accomplish many things. This is going to help my anxiety. It's going to help my comparisonitis because I am not going to be following the people that make me feel negative or that trigger things. Not that there's anything wrong with what those people are doing. It's my issue, but I want to step away from people that cause me to feel bad about myself. I don't know any other way to say it. Until I can celebrate their wins with them, I need to take a step back. So the limiting of social media is a pretty big one. The other big change that I'm making has to do with my time tracking. This video I know is already going to be super long, so I don't want to go into super detail about it because I want to do a separate video on how I'm going to be using my time tracking, but I will show you just for a moment the gist of the system. Okay, so this is my time tracking planner. It is a Franken planner. It is a combination. So I uncoiled several Erin Condren planners and recoiled them in a new way. So I have notebook pages, a mix of notebook pages, an academic planner, and the daily duo planner from Erin Condren in this one book. So it's kind of like self-created. But basically what I am doing is I am going to arrange my time a little bit differently and I'm going to arrange it in terms of task blocks. So basically a task block is going to be one Pomodoro or one 25 minute period of time. So like a writing sprint, except I'm going to do this with everything that I have. And I have identified that in a daily basis, Monday through Friday, I can do 12 to 14 task blocks, which is about six to seven hours of work. And then on the weekends, I can do six to 10, which is about three to five hours of work on the weekends. So on average, I have 72 to 90 blocks per week. So each block is half an hour is what I'm doing. And I have 29 working days in the month of April, which means I'm estimating 300 time blocks that I'm going to be working this month. So I have taken these dot grid pages and I have marked out 300 little spaces. And I'm using my color code, which I've talked about before. I've been using this for a year now. And I am keeping track of my time. I even have a little buzzer that goes off every 30 minutes that reminds me to track my time. And what I'm going to do is compare my estimated amount of time that I thought it would take me versus how much I actually used. So when I get to the end of April, I'm going to be able to see... Did I actually use all 300? Did I actually do 350 blocks worth of time? Did I work more or less? And this is a part of an entire system that I am doing for my goals this quarter. I have also created estimates for my biggest projects, like a newsletter project I'm assuming is going to take or estimating will take 20 blocks. My YouTube channel will take about 20 blocks of time this month. My And this is probably way too low. <laughs> like I said, it's probably going to be more like 40. And when I created this, I was probably kind of underestimating. Um, my plans and promotions, my promo work is going to be about 20, but my book, Vengeful Darkness, is going to be about 190 blocks. So that's the majority of my time. And so I have these estimates. And then when I sit down every day, I'm going to estimate how many blocks I'm going to work. So you can see on Friday last week, I estimated 12, but I actually worked 18. So this is what I want to see is, am I actually working a heck of a lot more? 
than I thought I was. And even today is going to be a big day. I know I've got at least 18 blocks or nine hours worth of work I need to do. But what if when the day is over today, I realize I actually worked 20 or 24 blocks and 12 hours. So I think that this type of time tracking is going to help me see much better how much time I actually have, how well I use my time, and what my estimates are versus actual time. Now, this is just me marking what I already did. This is not my plan for the day. This is my actual time tracking. I still am keeping my actual plan for the day inside my A5 planner. So this is like my intention for the day, my plan, whereas this time tracking planner is what I already did or what actually happened. So I'll be able to compare those two planners at the end of the day. So that's something a little bit new. I will definitely have another video coming up on this, but it may be a few weeks before I get to it. Okay, so a super brief overview of my new task block system, which is basically a Pomodoro system that's been altered just a little bit to match my HB90 system. If this actually works really well for me, then it will probably become a part of the HB90 course and planner, but I want to make sure it works and test it. So I will be keeping you guys updated. If you want to see a more day-to-day -day view of whether this is working for me, how it's working, and that sort of thing, then come and follow me on Instagram, which is now at Heart Breathings. It used to be Heart Breathings blog. I changed the name to Heart Breathings. Thank goodness. I've been trying to get that for years. So come follow me over there and I will be doing most mornings. I'll be doing a little coffee chat in the morning and then bookends in the evenings that I will show you kind of how my estimates turned out and that sort of thing. So if you are interested, come follow me over on Instagram. But now it is time to actually reset my board, reset my room and get this going. So Q2, here we go. Let's get some sun. Okay, so that is the board completed. I've got, this is still the reformatting project that still needs to get done. I still wanna hit 42,000 subscribers. And this is the Manifestation Babe course that I'm still gonna do. So those that stay on the board, otherwise, here we go. Let's reset the whole thing. Here it is, my completed Kanban board for Q2. So if you have not been following along for a bit, I decided a few quarters ago to separate my post-it notes into the same time tracking color code as my, you know, one that I'm using here. So my writing tasks are the darker purple and non-writing sort of admin or marketing type tasks are the lighter purple. And then the darker pink is my YouTube. The lighter pink is my HB admin. Heart Breathing's courses and stuff is the green color. And then over here, the yellow color is my like routines and ideal life type stuff. And then the blue is planning. So I'd like to keep that as close to my board so that everything seems to be working in conjunction with my time tracking. And the more organized I get with that, the better. Now, I had several people ask me, like, where did I find such dark post-its in this smaller section, the smaller size? And the truth is I didn't. So what I did was I bought the regular three by three post-its and then cut them down. And actually that's helping them stay on the board more because these darker post-its are actually not post-it brand. They're Office Depot brand and they're still staying on the board. I had tried an off-brand post-it before 
and it didn't work. But if I take the bigger post-its, the bigger pads and cut them down, there's more sticky stuff on the back. So just a little trick there. I should do a whole video about sticky notes and how I get them to stay on my board even though they're very stacked. So the dark purple is basically everything to do with my writing of Vengeful Darkness and I am pretty excited to get those cleared off. Now I actually am hoping as a kind of like additional project to start working on another book before the quarter is over, but there's not really room here and I'm not going to promise myself that I'll have time for it because I'm also going to be doing a lot with heart breathings. So for now it's not on the board. It might go up later. I'm also hoping to record a beautiful demons audiobook, And then these are all my live chats and things that I've got going on as well as that formatting project I was telling you about. For heart breathings here, I have all of these greens are my tasks for the new HB90 course coming up in June. So that stuff won't start moving down the board till the end of the quarter as well as my planner. I'm I'm also going to be recording a brand new course this quarter, so more news on that later. Then I also have a project to set up my new camera. So right now I've been vlogging and stuff with my phone, which is fine, but I bought a new camera and I just haven't had time to learn how to use it. So I've got time blocks here and I've separated this goal into time blocks. So I'm hoping to spend 13 time blocks working on the camera or task blocks. So I've just put those task blocks there. So every time I complete a 25 minute block working on my camera, I can move that down the board. Then I've got my Camp Nano vlogs and my other videos for the quarter, which includes a brand new workbook on how to come up with great ideas. All of the lighter pink ones are mostly the writing retreats and double down days, as well as a few other projects that I'm working on for heart breathings. Finally, goal number three here is all of my routines. So my evening and morning routines, I just do like morning routine one and evening routine one, meeting with Janet one. That just means week one. And there are 13 weeks in the quarter, so there are 13 of these sticky notes. Then I also have a list of all the books that I want to read this quarter, as well as that course that I'm taking. Now this is something that is a little bit different. See how the time and week one and energy and week one, this is my time tracking and my energy score. And and I have gone ahead and marked each one for all 13 weeks with the days of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, et cetera, et cetera. So what I want to do each week is have this on my doing section of the board and then mark it off for the day so that I can see how many days I actually did it. That was an idea I got from a few of my members of my HB90 course. So this is how the goals are shaping up. But of course, this is not all it is. Now, if you're new to this channel, I can just briefly explain it. But all the tasks that I want to do, I go through my entire goal setting workbook. This takes me about three to four days to go through every quarter. And I decide my tasks and projects. And then I put each task that I'm going to do onto a sticky note. But you could do this if you don't like the idea of a board on the wall or you don't have room for it or you just don't like a lot of sticky notes. You can do this in Trello or Notion or you can do it in your planner with just a checklist. That's totally fine. But I like to do it because when I can see it, I'm more likely to actually follow through. But this is all the tasks I want to accomplish. And as I plan on Sundays, I will move these things down the board. So I'll say, okay, it's week one, I'm going to track my time and everything that's in the middle section will be what I'm currently working on. And as the week progresses, those will all move to the bottom section, which is the done section. Now a traditional Kanban board actually goes from left to right. I like to go top to bottom because it's just that feeling of moving it down the board and it feels complete when it's all the way at the bottom. For me, that just feels better, but feel free to do it however you would like. So this is the board. Obviously, we're already in week two, so some of these are going to go ahead and move down. But the other part of my system that I want to get set up today is my bulletin board. So this board here is a board that I actually had made uh, several years ago. You can see that it's gotten sun worn and so forth. But basically every quarter, this is part of my HB90 planner if you have it 
I have a 90 day plan where I say, this is what I want to have done by the end of each month. And so these are all my tasks arranged by deadline. This you can see is my completed one from Q1 where everything really got done pretty well, except those ones in my writing goal that had to change. So I, the projects that I abandoned and pushed back, those didn't get marked off. But as I go, I keep that on my board so that I can mark things off as I go and I can see how well I'm doing on my deadlines. The other thing that I do is I have these Erin Condren laminated calendars and I just basically put my schedule for when deadlines are, when I have YouTube videos coming out and what I'm going to be doing. You can kind of see a little sneak peek there of the ideas series that's coming up and my Camp Nano vlog and different things like that. So those are my deadlines. So I'm just going to quickly put those up on the board. Okay, so there is my little calendars where I can see them. It helps me stay on track. All I have to do, which I'll do after this, is fill out this sheet here and place it on the board and I will be done. So there you have it, you guys. New Kanban board, a new quarter. I'm pretty excited. Okay, so you can hear my kids out here because they're playing a little bit of music, but that's it. We are set and ready to go for Q2. It's going to be a busy one, but Q3 and Q4 are really the busiest of my life pretty much. Plus, we're going to be moving into a new house. So another thing I'm going to be working on this quarter that is in my plans but not on my board is cleaning things out and prepping to move. So there's a lot going on in life right now. So as you can see, it's super important for me to be focused on getting rid of this anxiety and getting back to a place of joy as often as possible. We all have struggles. So no matter where you are right now, remember that you're not stuck there. I know that sometimes it can feel like you're stuck, but I promise you're not. There's always even just small shifts and adjustments that you can make to help you move toward your ideal life. And even when things are going really well, you're still going to face challenges and there's still going to be things that you struggle with. So we just meet each each challenge as we go and we do the best we can. And I promise you are doing a great job. So believe in yourself, keep going toward your dreams. And thank you so much for being a part of this Hardy's community and for being here. We have NaNoWriMo vlogs going on, a new series about how to write great ideas, how to come up with and brainstorm and store all your amazing ideas, including a brand new notebook that I've been working on called my Master List Notebook. I can't wait for all this great content. I hope that you will join me if you are not subscribed. Be a subscriber. Click that bell so that you'll be notified when new videos come out from me. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye. Mm -hmm.